When creating a pocket inlay on your CNC, you have two work pieces to work with. One will be the pocket itself and one will be the uh, inlay piece. Each of those pieces are going to have a start depth and a flat depth. So therefore, you're, we're, we're looking at four uh, variables that you need to manipulate. Uh, that would be the pocket start depth, the pocket flat depth, the inlay start depth, and the inlay flat depth. Now, the pocket um, flat depth is always going to be zero in this kind of setup. It's always going to start on the top of the, the pocket workpiece and it's going to outline your piece, your artwork. Uh, so I'm just not, it, that's always zero. Let's eliminate that as a, a variable and just concentrate on the other three. Sticking with the pocket for now, uh, the pocket flat depth defines the bottom of the, the glue gap. It is the it must be equal to or larger than the inlay start depth. However, if it is equal to the inlay start depth, it, there is a risk that the inlay will trap the glue and prevent it from fully seating into the pocket. So I'll change the pocket flat depth in this illustration to, uh, to explain that. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit shallower. This will decrease the glue gap and at this point it is the glue gap is uh, 50 thousandths of an inch and that's probably just fine for for a glue gap of uh, in this case now let's look at the inlay start depth the inlay start depth will determine how thick the finished inlay material will be this also defines the top of the glue gap the inlay start gap must be equal to or less than the pocket flat depth. They work hand in hand. If the inlay start depth is equal to the pocket flat depth, again, there will be no room for the glue to squeeze out, and this might prevent the inlay from fully seating during glue up. Here I will manipulate the inlay start depth to increase the glue gap and demonstrate how it affects the glue gap. So if I make the start depth smaller, remember the inlay is upside down at this point uh, compared to where it was when you cut it out on the CNC. So I make it smaller, it opens up that glue gap. Now the glue gap is one one thousandth of an inch. I'm going to change that inlay start depth back to where it was because I want to keep the five thousandths, fifty thousandths of an inch glue gap here. Note that the inlay start depth and the pocket start depth coincide uh, during the glue up. They are coincident. Lastly, let's look at the inlay flat depth. This has no real consequence to the final product but it does offer a saw gap, which is a term I made up just for the purposes of this illustration so we know what we're talking about. The saw gap is the gap left between the top of the pocket piece and the waste material or the inlay flat depth uh, of the inlay piece. Some online documentation so left me feeling that this had to be a certain number. But as you can see from the illustration, this is a variable that does not define, all it does is define the gap between the pocket and the inlay. has no bearing on the final product. Some form, forums even um, suggested that it had to be larger than enough for a bandsaw blade to pass through, but in reality the bandsaw doesn't need a gap to pass through it, it'll pass through the waste material no matter what. So um, that's why I say the inlay um, flat depth is inconsequential. Let me show you what I mean here. If I change this to something much uh, larger, that this gap increases, but it really doesn't affect anything else. Um, this is just, all this is going to be waste material. Once I cut this off, this is what the inlay is going to look like, and that uh, inlay flat depth will be removed. If you would like to call up this model on, on, on shape, uh, I will leave a link to this model. Uh, further down in the article and you feel free to copy it to your own Onshape workspace and manipulate it as you want. 
I don't believe that you can manipulate it as long as it's uh, until you copy it into your own workspace. But uh, Onshape uh, has a free version that is fully capable of looking manipulating this model and looking at it. Hopefully, it'll help you better understand the uh, inlay flat depth and the uh, pocket flat depth and the inlay start depth. Uh, one last thing I just wanted to show you, I just remembered on here, I wanted you to see that the um, bit angle really doesn't make a difference in this other than changing the angle of the, uh, the wall. So if I change that bit angle, all these depths are still the same. The software is going to figure out the step over that it needs to uh, compensate for the, the angle of the bit. You really don't need to worry about the angle of the bit as you're doing this because uh, but you do need to use the same bit but when you're cutting the inlay and the pocket just because of the slight variances in many um, V bits uh, even one degree would make a pretty good gap um, so you want to use the same same V bit